Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the RLC curve, which you can use to compare the performance of different machine learning models. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to the GitHub of the Data Professor, click on the code repository, go to Python, and then find the RLC curve, click on that. Right click on the raw link and save a local copy to your computer. Or you could also follow along by looking at the GitHub. Right, save link as and save it to your computer. And so if you would like to use the Google Colab, you can also feel free to do so as well. So first thing that you want to do is click on the GitHub and then type in data professor. Enter. And then find RLC curve. Click on that. And so today is going to be machine learning in Python series. And we're going to create receiver operating characteristic curve or shortly known as ROC. Okay. And today we're not going to use the iris data set, but we're going to use a synthetic data set. So in a nutshell, the ROC curve will summarize the prediction performance of a classification model at all classification thresholds as a function of the true positive rate and false positive rate. Okay, and the true positive rate will be on the y axis and the false positive rate will be on the x axis. And for the true positive rate, it is also known as sensitivity. And for the false positive rate, it is also known as one minus specificity. Okay, and the equation is provided right here. Okay, so let's hop on to the next step is to generate the synthetic data set. And for this one, we're going to use the make classification function of scikit-learn. And also we're going to use the numpy. And actually numpy will be used here. So let me move this over to here. Okay, and here we're going to create 2000 samples in the data set, and then it's going to create two classes, and the features will be 10. Okay, and import numpy as np, and then we're going to make noisy features in order to make the data set look more real. Okay, otherwise, it will make perfect prediction and it will look just too good to be true. So let's make it a little bit more difficult for the machine learning model to perform. Okay, and so let's now perform the data splitting. And now we're going to perform the actual train test split using import argument of xy data matrices. And the test size, we're going to set it to be 20%. Okay, and now we're going to build two classification models, which we will compare. The first one will be the random forest, and the second one will be the Gaussian naive base. Okay, and then we're going to assign the random forest to the RF variable, and then RF.fit to create the model, and the input argument will be the X train and the Y train, which will be the 80% training set. And finally, it will be evaluated on the test set. Okay, and now we're going to create the naive base model. So here we're going to create the prediction probability data matrices. And as the baseline, we're going to have a variable called R probs. And so this one will contain zero or the worst case scenario. And here will contain the probability of the predicted values by the random forest model and by the naive base model. And here we're using the predict proba function to get the probability from the prediction. And so in the following cell code, we're going to keep the positive outcome. And here we're going to import the library, sklearn.metrics, and we're going to use the function ROC curve, ROC AUC score. Okay, now we're going to compute the AUROC. AUROC is the area under the ROC curve. So under the curve, what is the area? Okay, and then we're going to print the scores. And then here you see, so by random chance prediction, it is 0 0.5. So random chance prediction will mean that all predictions are wrong in here. Okay. So when we have assigned a probability of the prediction to be all zero, it means that all predictions are wrong. And for the worst case scenario, the AUROC will equal to 0 0.5. Okay. And then the performance of the random forest will be about 0 0.894. And naive base performed better by having AUROC of 99.3. Okay, and now we're going to compute the FPR and TPR, which will be used to create the RLC curve. All right, so now I think we're ready to finally plot the curve. 
Okay, and here we go. We have the RLC curve. So in a nutshell, the RLC curve is commonly used in the machine learning community to compare the performance of different learning models. So here we can see that the naive Bayes provided the best performance as it occupies the curve at the far left and top. And so the area under the curve will essentially be one, almost one. 0.993. Whereas for the random forest, the area under the curve is about 0.894, right? So it's the area under this curve. Okay, and so for the labels here in the legend, we put in the AURLC value in the parenthesis. So you can see that the area under the curve values are provided by these three variables, NB, AUC, RF, AUC, and R, AUC. Okay, so if you run it individually, you will see the values. Right, 0.5, RF AUC, 0.89, and NB AUC, 0.99. Okay, and then we're going to put the modulo operator in here. And then we're going to print something out. We're going to say NB colon, and then It's going to be encapsulated in the print function, and we're going to say percent point three f. Shift enter. Okay, there you go. Actually, okay, there you go. So you see that it round the number off to only three digit decimal, zero point nine nine three. So if you make it two, it will be only two digits. All right? You can make it four as well. 9932. Okay, so that's the label here, which will be present in the legend. And so the RLC plot title is in the plt.title function. Okay, and you could also modify the X label, Y label as well in here. All right, so congratulations, you have now created the RLC plot. So you can improvise and try this on a different data set and then upload it to GitHub, grow your data science portfolio, because the best way to learn data science is by doing data science, not only by learning, not by watching data science, but by doing data science. Because when you do data science, you will encounter errors, you will encounter problems. And the journey that you use to solve the problems will allow you to mature and learn and grow as a data scientist. Okay, so embark on this journey to become a data scientist by doing data science. So enjoy. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.